Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of What's Up in Archaeology. Today I have three articles which I will discuss. And just before I got on, I spilt my beer over my home, my keyboard. Ha! <laughs> but uh, accidents do happen. Um, anyway, hello everyone, by the way. Uh, we will begin. Uh, we will begin right now. The first article deals with... Um, I've already talked about this before. Um, I've, all, I've always mentioned in a lot of my streams when I talk about Neanderthals and Denisovans that, there, that we have evidence of a third uh, extinct uh, uh, Homo sapiens species. Uh, as, we, as everyone knows, we are Homo sapiens sapiens. Neanderthals are Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. Denisovans are, at the moment, Homo sapiens denisovians. And there's a th a th another one, a fourth one. And uh, we have evidence. I have a here from a, 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 a magazine, um, a news, um, a publication called, uh, I will share it, called uh, uh, Science Alert. And uh, the, the Pacific Islanders appear to carry the DNA of an unknown human species. So um, let's, let's read. Hints of an extinct... Um, of a, an, hints of an unidentified extinct human species have been found in DNA of the modern Melanesians. If you know what the Melanesians are, they are Papua New Guinea, the uh, New Britain, the islands uh, north of Australia, and they go into the island, the South Pacific Islanders, the Micronesians, etc., etc. New Zealanders as well. So they are also Melanesians, uh, at least the Maoris are anyway. Um, those living in the region of the South Pacific, northeast of Australia. According to a new genetic modelling, this the species is, is unlikely to be Neanderthal or Denisovan. The two uh, ancient species that are represented in the fossil record, but could represent a third unknown human relative that has so far eluded archaeologists. We have uh, the... Uh, Archaeological evidence of uh, fossils for uh, Denisovans. That Denisovans, as I said, is only the small knuckle bone and the tip of a finger, but it's a physical evidence. The Neanderthals, we have vast, vastly amount, vast amount of of material for from the the, the, the Neanderthals, but this species we do not have any physical uh, evidence of them so far. Bones, etc., etc. I'll, I'll accept that archaeonomy. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, he's right. I'm wrong. Archaeonomy in the chat is right. Maori are, are, are Polynesian. They are not Melanesian. Okay? He is right. I am not. So, I'm not an expert on a lot of things. And uh, I thank experts that know more than me to correct me. Thank you, archaeonomy. Cheers, man. Um, so, we are missing a population, or we are misunderstanding something about the relationships. Ryan Bolander, a statistical ge geneticist of the University of Texas, who told Science News, Tina Heisman say, uh, Bolander and his team have been investigating the percentage of extinct hominin, hominid, hominin, hominin. This article is already... Um, Uh, this um, um, article is already slightly wrong, uh, even though it's a science publication. It's hominin, not hominid, DNA, um, that modern humans still carry today. And so they found discrepancies in previous analysis that suggest our, our mingling with Neanderthals and Denisovians isn't the whole story. Correct? Um... It's though that between 100,000 and 60,000 years ago, our ancestors migrated out of Africa. Well, I've already presented evidence on other on some on the videos which I've made, a video which I've made that um, we probably left Africa. At least a group of early Homo sapiens left, Homo sapiens sapiens left Africa 
200,000 years due to the DNA that they are found that have been found in in um, Neanderthals but I'm jumping ahead to uh, of myself so let's let's continue um, the contact left a mark on our species that still that can still be found today with Europeans and Asians carrying distinct genetic variants of Neanderthal DNA and in their genomes I have a lot of I have a quite a good um, percentage uh, it's close to the top they've um, they they can never uh, at the moment they haven't settled on a scale uh, when I was when I did my genetic testing from the, the genome project of National Geographic came back that I had 3.5 percent I'd have 3.5 percent uh, percent uh, Neanderthal DNA and uh, there's been now new developments that have uh, said no nope, it's between humans modern humans have only three percent maximum and i've also seen 2.5 percent so the jury's out on the actual scale but i have close to the top i due to where my where i'm from it's a very isolated little niche in in the iberian peninsula so yes and that's not all they have given us Okay, uh, early this year, researchers investigating certain genetic variants of the of the peoples of European descent inherited from Neanderthals have found that they are associated with several health problems, including slight a uh, slight increase risk of depression, heart attack, and a number of skin disorders. Uh, some have some of these studies have been debunked so far; others have not. Um, there was one that uh, about the depression one. And uh, schizophrenia in particular that has been debunked since. Um, so, again, take. So, um, studies are continually being updated, and one must be at the, the forefront of when they come out. I'm not at the forefront of doing the research, I'm, I'm at the forefront of actually reading them because I love to read and I am linked to. I'm luckily linked to uh, publications that at least put them out quite close to their to their publication so or just immediately after as quick as possible so that's how I like to keep it well I may not do videos on them because sometimes they even bore me to tears because they are just bloody statistics and crap and sh and so on but occasionally there's a nice story that I can pick out so so yes um, a separate study published early this month. You guys, can, these all these that um, they have links as I was. The articles are in the description. Please read them. Please follow the the links. Uh, I will be reading two links from them, so that's why I'm not getting ahead of myself. Um, but I think they are interesting. So um, let's continue. Uh, published early this month, found evidence that modern uh, genetic warts, otherwise known as the human papilloma virus, HPV, which is uh, the vaccine is called the anti-slut vaccine for some un Oh shit, there goes my, my monetization. I tried not to... Oh god. Um, I did get all my videos monetized again. I posted on Twitter that I had, um, had a few unmonetized, but they were remonetized back. So maybe this little word that I just said before will get away. Oh. Uh, Jimmy Stiff Fingers, they were not Jewish. So, and their lives did matter until they became extinct. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the article. <laughs> Sorry, man, I couldn't resist. Um, um, were sexually trans... Oh, this is a contentious. This, this statement is very contentious to me. Um... Uh, as I'll read it again. As a separate study published uh, early this month found that modern gen gen genital warts, otherwise known as human papilloma virus, papilloma virus, were sexually transmitted to Homo sapiens sapiens after our ancestors quote unquote slept with Neanderthals and Denisovans once they left Africa. I am, uh, I am so. <sighs> They did not sleep with us. 
they we mated with each other homo sapiens sapiens mated formed families it was not a casual encounter they did not go to the cave bar and order a cave drink and have had afterwards go back to the the cave apartment and have casual cave sex no that's not how it works uh but but yes, I, uh, no, that's the wrong wording. They were mating. I've made videos and there's on and I think I'll, I'm going to plan a video, guys. Soon I will do this. I have to do this for my own sanity and sake, because I need to actually instead of just reading articles, I have to do some work, because or else I will. I'm, oh. November will be the beginning of a new era of my. At least I'll try if I don't procrastinate as much as I do. Um, Whereas uh, the diff the 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 different um, outcomes between Homo sapiens sapiens and the Neanderthal mating and Homo sapiens and Neanderthals matings, how how the 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 children uh, were produced or not, I will make a video on that. Even though I touched upon it in a few articles that I've in a few uh, videos that I've made. Um, with our relationship with Neanderthals have been far widely researched. Yes, they have. Now we, uh, how we interacted with the Denisovans, it's the distance cousin of Neanderthals and us is less clear. Yes, it is because we have less genetic material, just less less genetic markers in modern humans' DNA, and uh, we haven't found as enough of their actual fossils. So. So that's that's a good excuse. No, it's not. Excuse. That's a good um, reason. The problem is that Neanderthals are well represented in the fossil record. Yes, with many 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 remains have been uncovered across Europe and Asia. But all we have of the Denisovians, as I said, is a lone finger bone. There's a little tip of the finger bone and a couple of teeth that are found in a Siberian cave in 208. The cave is Denisova in the Altai Mountains, and I've talked about it when it was first published uh, the articles there it's in my videos you guys can have a look using a new computer model to model to figure out how the amount of the uh, neanderthal and denisovan dna carried by modern humans bolander and his colleagues found that europeans and the chinese people carry a similar amount of neanderthal dna about 2.8 percent see that's why that's where i'd mentioned the the scaling um the, it's between two and f and three and close to four percent uh so so um yes um maybe if they calibrated my results now it would bring it down to about 2.7 2.6 no 2.5 percent 2.6 so uh on that calibration so yeah i accept it um but then you go here uh the next sentence sort of clears it up uh, the result is pretty similar to previous studies that have estimated the Europeans and Asians carry on average between 1.5 and 4% DNA. There we have it. The calibration that I was talking about. I need a drink. I'm drinking this, um, if you guys want to are uh, curious, I'm drinking this uh, Finnish IPA. It's called uh, Sunri Sunrise IPA uh, from the Pinikin Casitliola Hispanimo. Brewery, I think. It's got 8.2% alcohol. It's bloody nice. And I spilt a bit of it before. Knocked it, knocked it over. I went onto my keyboard and my mouse. And, well, everything's working, but I spilt it. Oh, God. Damn it. So, yeah. No, they, Jimmy, they did not have hair. Neanderthals. Probably after Homo erectus, they didn't, we did not, the, our, our lineage did not have hair. Probably. I don't know. No one knows. So that's just throwing it out there. Oh, this zipper's nice. Um, but then when they're Dini's over DNA, things get a little bit more complicated, particularly when it comes to modern populations living in Melanesia, a region of South Pacific, including Vanuatu, Solomon Islands, Fiji, Solomon Islands, Fiji, Papua New Guinea, New Caledonia, West Papua, and the Malaku Islands. Yes, the uh, archaeonomy was right. New Zealand is not Melanesian. They are Polynesian. Different. Different. Okay? I stand corrected. Um, 
The Europeans have no hint of Denisovian ancestry, and people in China have a tiny amount, as 0.1%, according to the Bolander's calculations. But 2.75% of the DNA f uh, of the people in Papua New Guinea come from Neanderthals. Okay, and Bola estimate. Uh, Bolanda estimates the amount of Denisovian DNA in Melanesians about 1.11 percent, not not the three to six percent estimated by other researchers. So there we have it. It's a cont point of contention. That's why that's why you have scientific th uh, the scientific method. Every, you have independent uh, people trying to uh, replicating the results and seeing if they get the same results or replicating the tests and seeing if they get the same results and we have um, different outcomes there's a hell of a lot still to be asked did they follow exactly the same methodology of the test did they sample the correct amount of, sp of specimens etc etc there's a whole heap of of possibilities and uh, and also not just possibilities uh, that could affect the results but also um, uh, how how the test was conducted, etc. So we have to be very, 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 very careful. And and the best thing is to get the averages of all the all of them. Uh, after you get an, enough averages, after enough people have done the averages of uh, so many uh, tests to get trying to get the same results and the discrepancies uh, within each test appear, you you do form a pattern. Uh, but uh, for now, uh, we'll just accept both as correct because uh, they haven't been discredited either way they just said we got these results they got those results that's it that's how science works I love science human history is a lot more complicated than we thought it was <laughs> no kidding of course it is that's why it's so bl beautiful I always said a swear word so yes um, the finding is supported by a separate study by researchers of Natural History Museum in Denmark who analysed the DNA out of 83 Aboriginal Australians, 25 locals from Papua New Guinea Highlands. As we reported last month, uh, click on that study, it'll get you to those, those that, that uh, I haven't clicked on it by the way, uh, so I, I haven't, because I got this fresh today, so I haven't had enough time to read, but uh, because it's in my field, my, especially my speciality, I, I have a little bit of the no, just a little bit, just a little bit. As we reported last month, there was a more comprehensive genetic study of the indigenous Australians to date, and it indicates that they are the oldest continuous civilization on earth. I have, I'll, 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 I won't comment on this for now because um, you will see. Uh, as a result, reveal, uh, as but the result revealed something else DNA that was very similar to that of the Denisovans, but distinct enough for the researchers to suggest that it could have come from a third unidentified hominin. Hominin, not hominid. Get the bloody spelling correct. That's why it infuriates me. I'm crap at spelling, but I can identify the correct spelling of things and the correct nom nomenclature. Hominid is not, at, as we know, it's. It's not the homo species, uh, our, our lineage. Um, I've talked about it last week, so, so you guys can go back to watch my last video. I talked about that. So who was this group we don't know about? Uh, Eske Willerslev told Hesman say. Until we have more concrete evidence of this hypothesized third human species, for example, fossils, of course, are always nice. We can't prove this. Of course we can't. And we should point out that the Boland, Bolander's estimates have yet to be formally peer-reviewed. See? That's why you don't... You accept them, but you... Even after the peer review, you still accept them, but uh, you, have to, you have to question, you have to be sceptical. Always be sceptical. Uh, did, did he follow the same methodologies as the other tests? Yeah, there's a, everything has to be very similar. And uh, well, in fact, everything has to be exactly the same. And if the test results are not the same, then it's the test results that are not the same, not the methodology to get there. So that's why. So, uh, this, so it might shift with further scrutiny, which is absolutely correct. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. So, and it comes, um, and, it, and it could be that our identification of the Denisovan DNA is more ambiguous than we thought. That could, the Denisovans could be more genetically diverse than we thought, for example. It's a possibility. Or uh, human Homo sapiens sapiens mated with a 
possibly descendant of a uh, Homo erectus, local Homo erectus, because Homo erectus went into um, Asia uh, close to two million years ago, one million at least one, two million years ago at least. Uh, well, between that and one point, no, between that and six hundred. Uh, no, uh, Homo erectus lived in Asia for a long time before Homo sapien, sapiens, Denisovan, and Neanderthals moved into certain areas. So, because we know that, because Florence, the Homo florensis, the hobbit, quote unquote, from Flores Island, seems to be a direct descendant of Homo erectus, genetically wise anyway. But that's still, the jury's still out on that as well. So. Yes, um, but the evidence is mounting that our interactions with ancient humans are far more complex. Yes, they are, and that is bloody exciting than we assumed, which shouldn't be much of a surprise. I'm not surprised at all. No, no, not surprised at all. Just because we don't see them as in the fossil record does not mean that they don't exist. Obviously, the preserving the remains of something that tens of thousands of years isn't easy. I've made a video on that. Check it out. Uh, furthermore, the more we investigate the genetic makeup of our ancient societies, the more societies, no, cultures, the, the word you're looking for, and I'll explain in the next video, which I, the next article which I'm going to. So, Bola, Bola, Bolenda analysis uh, was presented last week at the 2016 American Human Genome Genetics Meeting, and this is from last year article so uh, it's an old one but it's a good one okay now on to the next one here we go that's why I didn't comment on, on one before that because this one is a genetic study points to indigenous Australians as the oldest continuous not a society on earth the, the oldest continuous peoples or culture not society because society is below culture and It's, it is complicated. A society uh, a society involves a lot more than just people and the culture, genetics. Uh, if they were saying that the, the indigenous Australians are the oldest genetically pure, genetically un... Oh, I, can't, I, I have to really think of this of this um, because I know I'll be totally demonetized and it'll be very very sensitive. So I'll have to be as 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 uh, diplomatic as possible. Uh, the as the oldest continuous uncontacted peoples on Earth. I think that would be a, quite a good. I'm not trying to get away from it. I just, I'm sick of idiots taking words out of context and and accusing people of uh, things that you're not. So uh, I don't give a, I don't care. I was going to say we're a bad word, but I don't care. But it's still not nice, and uh, that's how I think it should be said. Now let's get on with the article. So the it's the oldest continuous uncontacted peoples on earth. okay I'll use their word continuous society on earth but I think I hope you guys know what I'm talking about um, so uh, yeah let's I'm looking if I haven't crashed yet because last week was horrible and I apologize for last week last episode was horrible the I stopped five minutes before I wanted to stop so but it says here good so I'm happy um, so, the most comprehensive genetic study of indigenous Australians to date indicates that the group of the oldest continuous, they're not a civilization. We will use the society word, but they are definitely not a civilization because a civilization, I've uh, made a uh, video before and I'll tell you again what a civilization entails. Civilization requires, firstly, agriculture, requires writing. A hierarchical society 
and uh, this uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, hierarchical society, uh, hierarchical distribution of power. That is what a civilization entails. It could do without any one of those, but it must have at least two of those. For example, I gave an exa I made a video on. Uh, Oh God, Tepe, that that uh, oldest temple. Uh, oh God, I can't even pronounce it. I can't remember the name. Uh, no, never mind. You guys know what I mean. Um, that's what a society. That's what a civilization entails. And this is not. They were not a civilization. They could call them. You could call them a society. I will accept the society, but not the civilization. Uh, dating back to more than. 50,000 years ago there were no there were no civilizations on earth 50,000 years ago they were, didn't appear until about 7,000 7,000 years ago so that's 7 7 8 thousand years ago having another sip um, the modern indigenous Australians are descendants of the first people to settle Australia Technically yes, and I won't. And I won't. Gobekli Tepe. Thank you, Archeonomy. I couldn't. Oh, thank you. My, I, my, I'm. And thank you, all, all the guys. Thank you. Yes. Go. I know how to spell it. Beach price. I just couldn't remember the name. So, uh, <laughs> listen. Anyway, um, technically yes, they are this. The uh, descendants of the first people. No, they are. Uh, I'm, I'm, re I'm reading this again. The other. Uh, the, the modern indigenous Australians are the descendants of the first people to settle Australia. Yes, enough, enough said. Uh, the, um, uh, the new paper along, alongside two others published today in Nature. This was last year. Again, these are last year's articles, but uh, they're interesting. You can go back and read old stuff. Um, they're still relevant. I haven't had any, I haven't seen any new corrections of most of these studies to date, but I'll, but I'll, <laughs> you can be bobbed it. <laughs> give give Jimmy st stiff fingers a cigar, people. If he smokes, if he doesn't smoke, give him a lollipop. Yes, I know that was fat shaming. Oh God, forget it, forget it, guys, forget it. I'm uh, I'm not on a roll tonight. Uh, but anyway, let's get back to the the article. Um, according to the NA results um, of the two papers, most modern Eurasians are descendant from a single wave of migrants that left Africa around 72,000 years ago. Most. Um, most. Uh, the, the articles I... You, you guys, I hope... I'll, 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 I'll end it. Uh, I'll... Disc I'll um, Resume it afterwards. From the original migrations, uh, indigenous Australians and Papuans, ancestors of indigenous people from New Guinea, split off and ventured across the sea around 58,000 years ago. Uh, it's been pushed back to a close to 64,000 years now. So there's a little bit of a correction since this was made. Uh, before arriving in Australia around 50,000 years, uh, it's also been pushed back to 50 to close to 60,000 years, 64, if, I can't, if I'm not mistaking my last in a video I made about this, and were likely the first humans to cross an ocean, except that they may not have been, because the um, because uh, Homo erectus before them uh, landed in Java, and they had to cross an ocean even back then, so uh, again, see? See how you can, if you know, if you know your material, you know where to find those little, little details. They were not the first humans to cross an ocean, and I consider Homo erectus human, by the way. So, but that is moi. Uh, this story has been missing for a long time in science. One of the researchers, Esker Villerslev, an evolutionary, uh, oh, I think I've corrected it. Uh, Villerslev, the evolutionary geneticist of the University of Copenhagen in Denmark, told Hannah Devlin of the Guardian. Yeah, the Guardian. But sometimes the Guardian, you know, yeah, yeah. the Guardian sometimes posts relatively. No, it doesn't. They're just no. I won't. I won't go into the Guardian. Um, now we know th their relatives are the guys who were the first real human explorers. 
Homo erectus was also a human explorer, and so was Homo um, heidelbergensis, or ancest um, and, uh, ancestor, Homo ancestor, ancestor, which gave rise to Homo neanderthalensis and Homo Homo sapiens neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens denisovans, and like the uh, previous article, the mysterious Homo sapiens, sap, Homo sapiens. I almost caught you guys. <laughs> this story was. Um, our ancestor was sitting, was sitting, being kind of scared of the world. No, don't interpret. Don't. No. While they set out on this exceptionally journey across Asia and across the sea, I've made a calculation, right? Uh, humans dislocating from, say, Ethiopia or Tanzania, that area of East Africa, this. Uh, Loc dislocating their base camp two kilometers per year would have only taken them 7,500 years to travel the 15,000 kilometers from East Africa to Australia. That is not a long time. We have only been agricultural, uh, um, for example, uh, metallurgy is younger. It hasn't been 7,500 years since we learned metallurgy, For to give you a bit of context. Writing is more or less about the same, is, is a bit less. But pottery is about that age, 7,500 years that from us today. So that's a bit of a context that I can give you guys of what it takes. It's nothing, it is extraordinary, but it's not extraordinary at the same time. So... The Papuan and Australian indigenous population seems to split from each other around 37,000 years ago, even though because of the rising and lowering of the sea levels, Papua New Guinea and, uh, and Australia have been linked on a couple of occasions, but never to the Indonesian islands. I must stress that. There's the Wallace Line. That, that Wallace Line has never been dry land. North of the Wallace Land, you have primates, macaques, etc., South of it, you have marsupials predominantly. That's a little bit of knowledge for you guys. Uh, indigenous Australians uh, remain almost entirely isolated until around 4,000 years ago. But in the thousands of years it took them to get to Australia, it seems they came into contact with a range of other hominin species, of course, Homo sapiens, Neanderthalensis, and Homo sapiens, uh, Denisovians, most likely. And... Um, and it seems uh, that around 4% of the genome came from unidentified hominin... Ah, they got it right this time. Hominin relative. See? This uh, this author got it right. Awesome. Well, congratulate her. Even though she made a mistake about civilization. So, one point off off the, the my scale of badness. Uh, to come to this conclusion, the international team of scientists sequenced the genome of 25 Papuans and 83 indigenous Australians from the pa uh, Pama Niyungan speaking language groups, which cover around 90% of Australia. A second study led by the Harvard Medical School team and also published today in Nature. Click on the link if you want to see the, the study. It probably most likely will be behind a uh, pay, paywall. I haven't seen it, but I, but Nature usually does that, so that's why I haven't linked it. I'm linking. I linked in the description these articles, uh, and they mapped the genome of 300 people from 142 diverse populations worldwide, looking at any genetic uh, changes associated with evolution of modern human traits, such as paint, such as what. I have to read this again. Looking at any genetic changes associated with the evolution of modern human traits, such as painting cave art and the use of sophisticated tools, but they didn't find any. Of course they didn't find any. That's not a human trait. It's a human... Uh, what's that word? Ability. Has nothing to do with genetics. Wow, this uh, this article was, was I gave it a, a thumbs up just because it got the hominin part right. But this is stupid. There is no evidence of for a magical mutation that made us humans. Uh, of course not, dumbass. Well, there goes my 
my um, monetization. I'll get it back anyway, but... Uh, with the results, I can... Uh, can oh, God. Stone ma tool making and, and art are not genetically in by us. Neanderthals had them. Had it as well. So wrong. Well, it is from the Guardian. Jesus. There is no evidence from the magical mutation that made us humans. Of course there isn't. Um, because there is no mut magical mutations. We, it's, con it's a continuous since Homo erectus, basically. Even though um, the two genetic studies support uh, one single wave of migration out of Africa, um, it's been updated, more than one. The third paper came out today as evidence for at least two migrations out of Africa. Thank you, of course. Uh, led by Luca Pagani, a biological anthropologist from Estonian Biocenter in Tartu. I don't know where I don't know where that is. I think it must be in Estonia. The study also finds evidence of a huge migration of humans about seventy-five thousand years ago. Yes, there's one, uh, but also found evidence of an earlier migration around one hundred twenty thousand years ago. Uh, uh, my the la the one the last one I read and I made a video on it was about two hundred thousand years ago from um, DNA taken from Spain of Neanderthals, uh, which have dating about 170, 160,000 years ago, around that time, with a modern, with Homo sapien, not not sapien, but Homo sapien DNA, because it, archaic Homo sapiens, they were uh, most, uh, not our ancestors, but we were evolving into what we are now. We are still evolving, so so uh, we'll say that they were our uh, us, the, the ones that 200,000 years ago gave uh, genetic material to the Deniz, uh, Neanderthals of Spain and other parts of, Af of, Amer of Europe. The key to getting a clearer picture of what went down in our ancient history will now be to combine genetic evidence with archaeological evidence. Absolutely. Um, human history is really fascinating, a complex puzzle. Basically, it just says what are we what was said before it's really important to integrate information we know that some scientists have also cast doubt on how accurate the genetic timeline is of good that is that is that is good let them those scientists uh, uh, prove disprove with testable results testable um, uh, hypothesis and tests test testable tests oh, that's but that's yes, that's good. Uh, some side. Um, I don't think this study will be the final word. No. Um, recent discovery in places like China cast a big shadow over it. Uh, yes, but they just proves that Homo sapiens and Homo sapiens neanderthalensis mated also with and Denisovans also mated with the natives, uh, like the recent uh, cave in. Uh, Laos and China recent um, fossils have been genetically tested and they were most 90% Homo sapiens sapiens. The, the DNA from Denisovans and or, and or Neanderthals are within the normal range. So, yeah, they were basically Homo sapiens sapiens, like us, morally, more or less. Um... So we want to be repeating. Well, it's in the case. So the case definitely is in close on how humans first ventured out of Africa. Of course not, and populated the rest of the planet, which is good. We did that, uh, but nothing else. This new research serves as an important confirmation that indigenous Australians really were the first to inhabit that continent. Well, it it it'd be really, it would blow. I'm telling. This is what this statement means it would absolutely blow the scientific community of anthropologists and archaeologists if we do find a totally uh, unique genetic lineage of a, of australian uh, aboriginals in australia something that they have not found at all anywhere that that could say link to the earliest Homo sapiens sapiens that left Africa 200,000 years ago. If they find something like that, the world would, archaeological world would, um, fireworks 
display would cost billions because it would be like finding Tutankhamun's tomb like finding not even like find, yeah like finding Atlantis like actually finding physical proof of Atlantis even though Atlantis is Santorini an island in the Medi in the Aegean Aegean Sea so yes so, uh, that 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 sort of Anyway, let's get on to another one because I don't want to go into uh, um, Atlantean conspiracy theories. So, the last one is uh, sort of also linked to this. Uh, and we have it here. Uh, topped with, it was mentioned in the first one, the gen genital warts, the human papillo papillo papilloma virus. And we call them from Neanderthals. Uh, how big is this story? Not too long, not too long. So, researchers have found evidence that modern genetic warts, other ones known as human papillomavirus, were sexually transmitted to Homo sapiens after our ancestors mated and had families and children, etc., etc., with Neanderthals and Dennis Evans roughly around 100,000 years ago. So, that was one of the first uh, migrations out of Africa of Homo sapiens sapiens into these areas were populated by Neanderthals and Denisovans. Uh, this sexual exchange likely occurred soon after our human ancestors left Africa. Those randy little buggers. We homo sapiens sapiens are randy as randy can be. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I had to make that randy joke, sorry. Um, last beer, last sip, another sip. So, um, it explains why modern-day Sub-Saharan Africa is mostly HPV-free, whereas genital warts, whereas H HPV virus sufferers are common in many other parts of the world. So, if I say the actual scientific name, I might not get um, flagged by the by Skynet bots from YouTube. Um, researchers from the National Center of Scientific Research in France and Spain's Catalan Institute of Oncology uh, were particularly interested in the carcinogenic strains of HPV, which is HPV-16. HPV-16 is estimated to infect 4% of Americans and is known to increase the risk of cervical cancer. They ran 18 full sequence of HPV-16 from five different subtypes of the virus to see how it evolved. Then they used the computer algorithm, etc., etc. They got a genetic timeline. The virus had changed over the years, which is natural. Based on the timeline, they found that HPV-16 is roughly half a million years old, more or less. And, and likely arose within Neanderthal and Denisovan populations. Could have arisen in Denisovan populations who mated, possibly mated with Neanderthals and passed it on to them, or the other way around, or they um, mated with uh, the. Because there were another hominin species there that were possibly descendant of the uh, Aberectus with, you know, Florensis, the hobbit from Flores, the island of Flores. And so we see the, 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 all these, you, you, you can't just narrow. We have to be broad, open minded, and, and spread, broad, broad broaden our, our, our thinking. And I won't do that again. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so our results suggest that ancestral HPV 16 uh, already infected the ancestor of Homo sapiens and Homo, sapi and, uh, Homo sapiens Neanderthalensis half a million years ago. And that two main HPV-16 lineages co-diverged co with uh, earlier with either human lineage, writes the team. The research suggests that early humans had their own strain of HPV. Okay. Which can still be found in Sub-Saharan Africa today. Which is not HPV-16, by the way. That was the other HPV. Because there's many strains of that uh, HPV. Um, but uh, HPV-16 specifically arose in modern humans after our ancestors left Africa some 60,000 to 100,000 years ago. So HPV has been possibly in our uh, contact with us as uh, Gani says aliens. Exactly. I, I, this, this I almost agree with you, man. Aliens. Um, 
the interbreeding events between uh, Neanderthal and Denisovan populations with modern human ancestors, uh, ancestor populations led to a host switching through sexual transmissions of HPV-16 virus lineage from archaic populations into modern human ancestors. Well, uh, Denisovans and Neanderthals, I don't believe they were archaic. Our, ans our common ancestors between the three of us were uh, archaic. Uh, this hypothesis is backed up by the fact that the populations of Sub-Saharan Africa are generally HPV-16-3. Okay. Uh, they have published this um, uh, in Molecular Biology and Evolution. I'm sure it's been peer-reviewed. I will see if there's uh, any... any Because um, it's behind a paywall, um, unfortunately, I think. Let's click it. Sometimes... Uh, my internet can be slow. Nope, it's here. So uh, people can. I'll put this in the description. No, I won't. You guys can have. A, you guys can click on the link. You can download it. So uh, and uh, you can download it. It's got a PDF. You can cite it. You can permission. And this one's from January. So here, this is being peer reviewed already. So. Uh, because it's been published and uh, and been cited, so we, we, there we have it. Uh, the scenario, just to conclude, the the history of humans is is also a history of viruses, yes, and other diseases, not just viruses. Uh, in fact, um, the human flea, no, the human, what's the what the other one? Crabs, you know, we get it. Uh, the human genetic. Um, uh, genital t uh, knit, uh, genital genital god I can't remember that that little critter crabs the, the, the colloquial name for it uh, evolved with us uh, as we lost our hair, it evolved ways of of um, the flea. No, yeah, the flea. It's the flea, the human flea, and the uh, uh, the other animal fleas. For example, they can't. Um, it's not the flea. Never mind. Uh, the lice. Thank you. That's thank you, bees. That's what I was trying to get. The, fl the lice. The human lice is totally different from the primate lice. For example, the, the chimpanzee and the gorilla lice because they have much more hair while the human uh, uh, lice can only survive in humans and vice versa you put um, due to the their 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 their, their, their um, appendages and how they grapple onto the few hairs we have so frog lobsters <laughs> that reminds me of the b-52s man that song so yeah and so we, we've uh, come to the end of uh, this uh, lovely stream. This time it didn't crash on me. And how many minutes did it go for? Uh, about 48 minutes. Not bad, not bad. So, um, uh, we've uh, come to the end and um, going to go offline. Thank, um, thank you guys for coming along. Uh, crowd people. There's, there's a movie about that, isn't there? Something about that. So, I can't read with the com. Oh, yes, I'll read. I, I saw a comment that before that I have to answer. I didn't answer it before. It was from uh, Malefus. Uh, yes, I have. I do have good taste in beer. Uh, in Peri Indian Pale Ale, Ipa. I know how you spell it. <laughs> uh, and it is... Nice. I love IPA. IPAs. Uh, thank you guys for, for um, putting it up with me. I think uh, I'm getting a little bit better at this. And uh, I just need to figure... I, I just figured out that I can't invite anyone uh, to the live stream if I use um, uh, OBS. Uh, because only through quick streaming... That option of quick streaming does it allow that? But I'll see if I can do it another way. I don't. I, I have no idea how to start a um, Discord server, so I might do with um, 
with Skype, I'll put my Skype uh, contact in future videos so people can connect to me and uh, we will see. So guys, thank you for um, coming on and uh, IPPA, no, just IPA. Uh, I, Indian, P, pale, A, ale, I, P, A. I say IPA as a short, of course, uh, John W. Muse, it's not IPA, it's an IPA. That's the correct way to say it. We'll have a little bit of discussion on beers. Um, and um, uh, it, it is, it's Indian Pale Ale, and it was made because uh, the beer that was transported across from England, a nail to India for the offices, etc., etc., and it, to, for it to survive, they had to put much more alcohol in it to so it wouldn't go bad. Uh, it's much the same way as port wine was made. Uh, port wine originally was... Um, was made to the to stop it from going bad by adding stopping the firm adding much uh, alcohol uh, into it um, to it raised the, the the alcohol content and made it harder for for it to oxidize etc etc and that's how you get IPA IPA Indian Pale Ale and uh, port wine and Shiraz and Madeira wine and all that all those other bloody wines that you have fortified wines. So that's a little bit of extra for you guys. Uh, yes. Um, oh, share it. I don't have my camera set up, so uh, well, I'll lull that one. Let's see if I can get a camera. My camera source. Uh, let's see. Capture. Capture video. Display. Game. Image. Video capture the voice. Add. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, there we go. How's it going, people? Uh, this is the IPA in question. Can you guys see it clearly? I might keep this up. Out of shade, by the way. Uh, it's called Sun IPA. Sorry for my camera, it's only a cheap uh, 6 uh, Trust camera, it was very cheap, it's not nothing very expensive. Uh, so, man, the lag's a long time. So, uh, yes, yeah, look, i got a camera. So, um, I don't care about doxing myself or anything, just so I can go off now. I'm going to keep this. Because uh, it's uh, in case of future videos, so I'm watching on my laptop. Myself, it is. Uh, uh, it's a bit bright. Uh, I apologise for that. Uh, yeah, it is too bright. So, uh, but never mind. It's an. It's an. Uh, Thank you, I do, I am Portuguese, uh, table can. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I had a shave, I'm, I'm an old cunt, so. Anyway, guys, uh, uh, lovely to talk to you again. I'm going offline, so. Well, this is a Finnish IPA, uh, Malefus. It's made in Finland. I said the I think the brewery is P it's P Y Y N I K I N. I think it, it probably pronounced Pinikin. And it's from Kasi T O L I Spanning Spanimo or something. It's made in Tesoman Vaitatie twenty four three 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 zero zero Tampere Finland. I can't pronounce the other the other uh, 
the other writing that it's there. So anyway, guys, it's uh, awesome to talk to you. Um, going offline now.